for Drive today, we settle your powertrain debate. Should you drive a petrol, a diesel, a hybrid or an EV on Indian roads today? And we also take you through the Lamborghini Urus Performante. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I'm Sonita. There is no debate on the fact that India is big on SUVs. In fact, the debate only arises when you have to decide which powertrain suits best for your pocket. So we decided to pit a petrol-powered SUV against a diesel, against a hybrid and also against an electric one. Take a look. Hatchbacks still rule the roost. Sub 4 meter SUV pretenders, well, they continue to offer great value. But it's the mid-sized crossovers that are attracting the most attention. And it isn't hard to see why. These vehicles offer tremendous space for a family of five. They have a lot of features, so much so that they can give luxury cars a run for their money. And then they offer a good mix of performance and efficiency. All of this makes them a rather compelling buy. In fact, it could arguably be the only car you might ever need. But today we aren't here to pick out a winner. Instead, we are here to talk about the differences in the powertrain department. Because for the first time ever, this segment now has a diesel, a petrol, a petrol hybrid and an all-electric to choose from. The Koreans are still betting big on diesel and their sales are strong. Therefore, the representing diesel powertrain for this test is the Hyundai Creta. So in the BS6 era, now with the phase 2 of it kicking in, the emission norms have become a lot more stringent. But the 1.5 diesel from the Koreans in the Creta or in the Kia Seltos, these two cars have the volumes, so they can still make the changes that are necessary to make this diesel engine compliant for the phase 2 norms. So this 1.5 diesel that does duty in the Creta is not just clean enough for the BS6 phase 2 standards, but it also continues to remain one of the punchiest 1.5 litre diesels around. It's also extremely refined. Of course, in this company of petrols and electrified vehicles, it does feel a bit noisy and coarse, but for a diesel by itself, it's superbly refined. It continues to offer excellent economy. And if your driving trend includes a lot of extra urban or highway runs, the diesel could still make a lot of sense for you. Add to it excellent gearbox options like the manual here has slick throws. If you go with the automatic, it's nice and telepathic, it's quick as well. So those gearbox options combined with a supple ride, taut handling dynamics around winding roads like these, combine all of that and you have a car that feels premium, whether you're driving it in the city, out on the highway or even around the Christie's. The Creta, like the Kia Seltos, comes loaded to the gills with new age creature comforts and features like ventilated seats, branded audio and connected tech with over-the-air updates. The Creta has one of the roomiest cabins too, while providing a large boot space that pips the high rider and the Tygoon. The other diesel options you could consider in this price bracket are the Kia Seltos, which has similar credentials to the Creta, or the MG Hector and the Tata Harrier, but they aren't as efficient. But if you think that diesels don't make financial sense for you, or you're worried about the future of the diesel vehicles, or you think that your daily running or yearly running is so low that hybrids or electric vehicles may not make any financial sense or you're simply a petrol head if it's either of the above or all of the above then the pure petrol propulsion is what will catch your fancy and what better crossover to represent the petrol camp than this the Volkswagen Tycoon it's a nice compact package which is powered by what I think is one of the sweetest petrol engines under 25 lakh rupees, the 1.5 TSI. It is almost impossible to drive it gently because of the performance it packs. But should you control your right foot and use the engine cylinder deactivation technology to your advantage, you should be able to get a good fuel economy out of it. Otherwise, it can be quite thirsty. So the torque is on par with the Creta diesel, so lugging a family of five going on road trips, no problem at all. But more importantly, it puts out 150 PS of power from a package that weighs a little over 1300 kilos. So the power to weight ratio is excellent, the acceleration is brisk, edge of the seat entertainment all the time is almost guaranteed. What I also like about the engine is that it's a four-cylinder, which means it sounds a little bit better than most of the other thrummy three-cylinder engines that you have in this segment. 
The DSG also comes in the exclusive GT Plus variant, meaning you also get some additional creature comforts. Though it is no match for what the Koreans or surprisingly even the Japanese are offering for a similar price point. So the Tygoon may appear compact on the outside, but the space is on par or in some respects even better than the Creta. We can tell you because we actually measured it. In terms of the seating comfort, I quite like it. Maybe people with a larger frame than mine might find the contouring, especially of the front seats, to be a bit intrusive, especially around your shoulders. But otherwise, I quite like the seating comfort. I also quite like the ride quality on the Tygoon. You could also choose the Kushak with similar engine and credentials, or you could go with the smaller 1-litre engine of the Kushak or the Tygoon. But despite being of a smaller displacement, it is thirstier than the 1.5 and certainly not as much fun to drive. For the 1.5 TSI from Volkswagen, I just can't stop talking about it, right? It will ensure that if you are even this bit of a driving enthusiast, it will always plaster a smile on your face. But don't shun the electrics. We've just about scratched the surface on this story. On the other side of this break, we will bring hybrids and EVs into the mix and tell you all about our findings. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. Hello, Kia. Open the sunroof, please. Sunroof opening. This one's a turbo. 1.5. Nice. The all-new Hyundai Verna. Futuristic. Ferocious. Welcome back. You're with us on Overdrive. Now, we brought together a petrol, diesel, electric and hybrid SUV together to tell you which one is the most economical. And now it's time for us to bring in the MG ZS EV and the Toyota Highrider into the mix and to tell you all about our findings. For the 1.5 TSI from Volkswagen, I just can't stop talking about it, right? It will ensure that if you are even this bit of a driving enthusiast, it will always plaster a smile on your face. But don't shun the electrics. With their instantaneous torque and the subsequent acceleration that they provide, it's something that you need to experience. It's something that is addictive, even in this class. In fact, this car will always ensure that it still gives you more laughs than something like the Nexon EV. The price premium it charges over the Nexon or any of the crossovers you see here will make you frown. But this electric will pay its dividends in the long run should you be an early adopter. From getting off the mark to driving in the city, driving out of your neighborhood, going onto the highway, driving out of the twisties, it's an electric, so it's all silent. This silent powertrain is actually nice. People around you will actually appreciate it. And apart from that appreciation, the best-in-class power and the lowest running cost is something that you will appreciate. So it seems like the ZS EV is making all the right noises. And being an MG, it is high on features and creature comforts too. It also has the largest boot of this test. So even short road trips to outskirts like these are doable as long as the roads are good because the ride quality is pretty firm. But short is the keyword for your road trips here because as per our tests, a 300 odd kilometer range at best is what the ZS EV might give you. So if you are going to have to travel longer than that, if you frequent the highways often, if you shuttle between cities often, then at least in this particular price bracket, the electric powertrain is not for you. That brings us to the hybrid. Now, until the Honda hybrid crossover comes out later this year, you only have two options if you want a hybrid in this particular price bracket. You have the Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara and then you have the High Rider. The siblings, they share a lot of parts, they share the powertrains as well. But we've chosen the latter because what we've chosen is the full hybrid, which is a powertrain that belongs to Toyota, which is why it's also a little cheaper if you buy the High Rider hybrid compared to the Grand Vitara hybrid because they don't have to pay royalty, etc. Now, this hybrid powertrain is very similar in tech to the Camry and the Prius that preceded this car. 
However, unlike those two cars, this one is way more economically priced. So much so, in fact, that these two cars now from Maruti and Toyota are democratizing hybrid and making it easy to access for the masses. It commands a fair premium over its competition though, but the running costs are hard to ignore. It pips the diesel on outright economy and long road trips won't riddle you with the range anxiety like an electric wood. The ride quality is better than an EV like the ZS, which doesn't come with adaptive dampers given the price constraints. And because Maruti and Toyota are already doing large volumes with these two models, they have also been able to offer features and creature comforts that are on par with Hyundai or Kia. Yes, I know it's not an outright comparison, but if I had to pick out the best looking vehicle, not just in this comparison, but out of all the crossovers in this price bracket, I think it would be the high rider. It looks sporty and still manages to look so elegant. Just don't buy it in white, the blue looks better. But as we mentioned right at the beginning, this is not an all out comparison of the models, it's more to do with the powertrains. Let us crunch the numbers now and see which of these cars or powertrains will make the most economic sense for you. We have driven these vehicles on a real-world driving cycle which includes 75% city and 25% highway use and all the prices for the fuel, electricity and the vehicles are referenced in Mumbai in February 2023. We have not included the service costs for the sake of consistency as these may differ as per your driving style or conditions. As you can see, the diesel car isn't the most fuel efficient anymore as the hybrid and the pure electric vehicles overshadow it by a huge margin. The cylinder deactivation technology of the Tygoon 1.5 does offer some respite in the petrol department, but the driving pleasure penalizes outright economy. With the Creta diesel manual as the baseline then, the Tygoon DSG costs at least Rs 2.5 more per kilometer. A caveat here is that the diesel automatic Creta not accounted for over here is Rs 65,000 more than the Tygoon GT, in which case the toss-up between the two is negligible over an ownership period. And from that perspective, I would certainly buy the Tygoon for the elevated driving fun it offers. But it is hard to ignore the economic advantage offered by the electrics. The High Rider Hybrid, for example, will save you about a rupee and a half per kilometer over the diesel Creta which means you will save around 30,000 rupees over 20,000 kilometers. So while the hybrids do have a significant efficiency edge, the cost of the technology needs to drop further to negate the higher petrol price. And in the coming years, we might just see this happen. But remember, in a hybrid, you're paying for an engine plus the battery plus the electric motor. So the costs are certainly going to remain slightly higher. The same doesn't hold true for pure electric vehicles do, but even there, the cost of technology needs to drop. The running cost of Rs 1.35 per kilometer is extremely tempting if you are the kind who likes to rake up a lot of miles every year. But the MG ZS EV comes at quite a hefty premium over its ice or hybrid competitors. And the limited range and the long charging times are deterrents for those wanting to cover long distances in a day. Advancements in battery technology aims to make long range and low cost possible in the near future though. And given how quickly the Indian market is adopting EVs, the transition will happen sooner than later. As of today, the diesel is still the obvious choice for those travelling long distances or clocking big yearly mileage. But as you can already see in the market, the diesel options are dwindling by the day. In such a scenario, you will either want to be an early adopter face some infrastructural challenges and move to electrics or side with the petrol powertrains and enjoy their refinement, sounds and mechanical connection while they last. Or if you'd ask me, I would simply choose a hybrid in the current scenario and get the best of all the worlds. So if I had to pick out a car out of these four, it would be the hybrid, either the Toyota High Rider or the Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara, whichever you prefer in terms of the styling. Hope you found that video useful we have broadly tried to touch up on every topic on this debate let us know what you think of this story on our youtube channel in the comment section we'll take a very quick break here on the show but coming up on the other side we'll get to 